NVIDIA 3080 Ti has been all but confirmed at this point, so we're going to talk about how it slots in compared to the other GPUs, as well as how it's going to be against AMD. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. If you're new here, consider subscribing, smash that like button. Today, we're going to talk about the 3080 Ti. We're going to talk about the GPU itself, what its potential pricing point will be, its performance versus the rest of the NVIDIA lineup, as well as how it's going to compare to the AMD GPUs. But first, we're going to talk about potentially the most important issue, and that's going to be stock and availability. If it's anything like the GPUs released so far this year, certainly it's going to be limited, difficult to get, and very, very high in demand. Now, the 3080 Ti is going to be possibly even more limited than something like a 3070 or a 3060 Ti, where we did see at least some decent numbers in terms of stock and availability. Of course, not widely available at all, but more people were able to get their hands on those GPUs than they were with the higher end SKUs. Now we can expect the 3080 Ti being pretty much NVIDIA's second best GPU in terms of performance and price to be pretty much just as difficult to get as the 3080 was. I don't necessarily think adding another GPU to the mix is going to be a bad thing. I think it's just going to be a different SKU that they're producing, giving more products out there for people to have an option, and maybe the guys that are going for the 3080 Ti will alleviate some of the demand for both the 3080 as well as the 3090. Maybe we can see those come into a little bit better stock and availability just because they're not going to be the newest hottest GPUs out the 3080 Ti is going to take some of that spotlight the second most important thing we're going to talk about is going to be the price of this GPU while there aren't really any official numbers or anything like that we can guess it's probably going to come in around $999 for the founders edition model and of course you can expect the third party models to be a hundred to two hundred dollars more as they have been with the other like GPUs for example the 3080 or the 3090. So by no means is this going to be a budget GPU. It's going to be very, very expensive, pretty much second only to the 3090. Should come in pretty equal pricing to the 6900 XT, which is going to start at $999 as well. But as we have seen recently, availability of that GPU has certainly been very, very sparse. And we can expect the third party models, just like with Nvidia, to carry a fairly hefty premium for some of these GPUs. So at $999, how does it feel? fit in price-wise in the market. Well, it's pretty far away from the 3090, so whatever performance spec that it actually comes out with, I think a lot of people are going to be more than happy to really make this their go-to GPU. So I don't think the 3090 will be much of a factor here. When the RTX 3080 eventually is more widely available at $699, that's still an attractive enough price point, maybe $300 less, that a lot of people, especially if all they're doing is gaming, maybe 1440p, they may still to just choose to stay with the 3080, but I can certainly see a lot of people jump to the 3080 Ti, and that's where we're going to talk about some of the performance reasons. First, the biggest difference between the 3080 Ti and the 3080, probably its nearest competitor, is going to be the amount of VRAM. Both are going to have the faster GDDR6X, but the 3080 Ti most likely is going to have 20 gigabytes of VRAM, and the 3080 will have 10. Now, why is this going to be important? Well, it's not for most games, especially if you're playing 1440p even many titles at 4k you're not going to max out the vram but there are certain situations and certain games in 4k that that limit is pretty much being broached already so certainly there will be some games in 4k and some use cases that right now already start to sort of saturate that 10 gigabytes of vram but most of this is definitely going to be more for future proofing and i think in terms of gaming it's not as big of a deal most likely content creators and people that are using these gp use for creative applications that actually take advantage of the VRAM, they're going to be most likely to go after the 3080 Ti. That's why the 3090 was sort of popular amongst the content creation crowd, because with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, there are certain applications that just really take advantage of that. And that's going to be the biggest difference, I really think, for creative professionals. That's where you're going to see the 3080 Ti also become a very popular choice. After all, the 3080 Ti really is sort of a scaled down 3090 instead of a beefed up 3080. So it's going to have a lot of things in common with the 3090 and we can expect performance most likely to be somewhere between the 3080 and the 3090, which is fine because in a lot of cases, the 3080 was already actually pretty close to the 3090. So then we can assume that gaming performance on the 3080 Ti probably will be almost as much as you could really hope for. And that's going to leave the 3090 most likely exclusive 
exclusively more for content creators who could actually take advantage of that little bit more of VRAM, 24 gigabytes of VRAM. So I think that's going to be sort of a very niche market for the 3090 even further after the 3080 Ti is released. So what about AMD's Radeon cards? How does the 3080 Ti stack up against those GPUs? First, at $999, it's pretty much taking the 6900 XT head on. And now the biggest factor here is not necessarily gonna be purely gaming performance, as the 6900 XT in traditional games and rasterization does actually, in some cases, even keep up with the 3090. So we can expect that to be pretty similar with the 3080 Ti. They're probably gonna be pretty close in terms of games in terms of traditional rasterization, they're going to be probably neck and neck in a lot of cases. The 6900 XT may edge it out in some cases. 3080 Ti may edge it out in other cases, much like has been happening amongst the other GPUs released earlier. Now, the biggest factor here is going to be ray tracing, DLSS. But now, I think in that traditional gaming sense, that's where sort of the comparison stops. Because I think in everything else, most likely the 3080 Ti should be a fairly superior GPU to the 6900 XT. First, ray tracing, DLSS. I know that not every game uses this technology, but the ones that do, even something like Cyberpunk 2077, which I know it's a little bit of a controversial game, but ray tracing and even DLSS seem to work very well in it. You do seem to get a nice boost in visuals. I have personally really been enjoying it. It definitely takes it up a little bit of a notch, and it's certainly a forward-looking technology. So if you're looking to do ray tracing, DLSS, with these technologies that are really favoring NVIDIA at this point, 3080 Ti is certainly going to be your best bet. In the other case, where the 3080 Ti will prove to be superior than the 6900 XT, possibly in content creation, where not only the NVIDIA encoders are still superior to the AMD encoders, but here you're dealing with 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X, which is going to be the faster VRAM, compared to the 6900 XT, which just has 16 gigabytes of the regular GDDR6 RAM, and it does have Infinity Cache and some other magic to sort of make it a little bit faster, but the VRAM in the 3080 Ti, especially for content creators, will still be the superior option. And the same comparisons will hold true for something like the 6800 XT. Even though it is cheaper, it's not going to match traditional rasterization against the 3080 Ti, not to mention ray tracing and DLSS. It's going to be far behind that GPU, but once again, you would expect that for that price difference. So I think the main competitor, at least at this point with the GPUs released, certainly will be the 6900 XT. But in my opinion, compared to what we know now, even with the 3080 against the 6900 XT, in cases where you want to use ray tracing, DLSS, or other NVIDIA specific encoding, it's definitely going to be most likely the better option for the 3080 Ti. So as we get near to a potential release date, possibly coming as soon as February, where is that going to leave the 3080 Ti? Well, I think based on the facts that we know now, it may actually be the most important high-end GPU. The 3090, while technically still performing better and having better specs, it's still a little bit too expensive and it's sort of a niche GPU. I don't really think it's sort of entered the heart of gamers that much. The 3080 Ti definitely has a lot of history with the 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti. That traditionally has been sort of the top GPU in most people's minds, regardless of whatever Titan level GPU was out there. For gaming, those were definitely the gamer's favorites, and I think this generation is going to be no exception, because not only does it have 24 gigabytes of VRAM, therefore eliminating any questions about the 3080's 10 gigabyte of VRAM, it also has pretty much most of the performance that the 3090 will have, but coming in at a much better price point, sort of in between the 3080 and 3090, hopefully around the thousand dollars, and therefore it appears that it's going to cement its place as one of the more dominant GPUs in the space, at least for this next upcoming year. It's going to be interesting to see what AMD can come up with, and these are certainly some logical assumptions that we can make based on the performance and benchmarks of the existing 3090 and 3080. Of course, the 3080 Ti makes complete sense for it to slot right in between there, but I I think that's really what the lineup was needing, not only in performance and specs, but also in price. And hopefully availability is going to be a little bit better than some of the previous GPUs, but it's going to be a very high in-demand GPU. And judging by its 3080 Ti moniker, meaning it's going to be a high-end GPU, you should not expect it to be found in the same quantities as something like a 3060 Ti or even a 3070. But regardless, it's going to be a very popular GPU and certainly one that's going to make competition even more fierce between NVIDIA and AMD. Alright guys, so 
So thank you very much for watching. Wishing everybody a happy new year. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.